but if it sticks in the more like metaphorical speculative fiction route then I'll, I'll be okay with that and I've heard mixed things on like how adaptable this is so I'm interested in seeing how that translates honestly I'm most looking forward to Ben Wishaw because I just really love him <laughs> like he just he slays <laughs> He slays as Sebastian, I'm just telling you, okay? So I still kind of can't believe this is happening and I don't know how to accurately describe <laughs> my feelings about this. It's just like silence and facial expressions. Speaking, possibly, of Yorgos Lanthimos. Yes, or maybe not. <laughs> This is the book that I read actually before I started Women Talking, and I liked it. This is not a review, but I liked it, and I do have a bit of a Goodreads review for it. Just thoughts mostly pertaining to something in particular about the novel. I'm definitely interested in reading more from Otessa Moshveg, and I do have another book by her, which is next. <laughs> so, um... This is about, I mean, this book is literally everywhere, so I don't know how you don't know what this isn't about, but maybe people in the film community are less familiar with this. So this is about a young woman who decides to find a wackadoodle, unethical, ultimately, uh, psychiatrist to prescribe her medication so she can continuously take them and sleep for a year. And she thinks that it will like reset and refresh her body and she will be a new person once she emerges from this hibernation. So that's the premise. <laughs> it very much, by the way, is actually about her taking these drugs and trying to sleep for a year. The back? Okay, I will read the back because I feel like it's important. Our narrator should be happy, shouldn't she? She's young, thin, pretty, a recent Columbia graduate, works an easy job at a hip art gallery, lives in an apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, paid for, like the rest of her needs, by her inheritance. But there is a hole in her heart, and it isn't just the loss of her parents, or the way her Wall Street boyfriend treats her, or the sadomasochistic relationship with her best friend Riva. It's the year 2000, in a city glitter with wealth and possibility. What could be so terribly wrong? Both tender and blackly funny. I didn't find this very funny. <laughs> okay, maybe the psychiatrist is, like, kind of funny, but in a way that you're like, oh my god, I can't believe she's real, and then it just gets, like, kind of sadder as you continue, and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, merciless and compassionate, my year of rest and relaxation is a powerful answer to that question and a showcase for the gifts of one of our major writers working at the height of her powers. So with the way that that back is phrased, which is why I decided to read it, it makes it seem like there's going to be a lot of like backstory leading up to why she's feeling this way. And it really is not that. <laughs> I mean, it does mention some things here and there, and she retells memories to an extent, but that really doesn't take up that much of the book, and that's kind of where I, um, some, that's one of the things that I mentioned in my Goodreads review, so I just feel like if you're gonna go into it with that sort of mindset of thinking that it's going to a lot be about <laughs> her, her, the circumstances before she decided to do this, I, I don't feel like it is, <laughs> okay. Reportedly, it is being written and directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. So that's our connection from Poor Things to My Year of Rest and Relaxation. However, his name used to be on like the letterbox page for this and it is no longer, his name's no longer attached as director and writer. I don't know what that means, but I do remember seeing it there earlier this year with his name being director. I kind of think, though, that an adaptation should probably be directed by a woman. And then the other thing that I have written down is that Margot Robbie bought the book rights. So she's producing along with her husband, Tom Ackerley, who is also an actor, I'm pretty sure. I feel like it'll be the same sort of situation where, like, Margot Robbie was a producer on Promising Young Woman. 
I think it'll be a similar situation where she is not the lead role. I think this is gonna... <laughs> she's not... I don't know, I think she's too old for the main character um, in Riva. So that sounds kind of rude, but like... I'm the main character's age, and she's only a few years older than me, I'm pretty sure. But I feel like a mid to late 20s actress is ideal for the main character, for playing the role of the main character, who by the way does not have a name, which is why I, <laughs> I haven't mentioned her name. Eileen by Otessa Moshbeck. So here we have the connecting same author. This is way further in production than like anything about that one. I actually expect this to be coming out, I feel like it should come out <laughs> towards the end of the year um, because it takes place around Christmas. So it says, the Christmas season offers little cheer for Eileen Dunlop, a young woman trapped between her role as her alcoholic father's caretaker in a home whose squalor is the talk of the neighborhood and her day job as a secretary at the boys' prison filled with its own quotidian horrors. Consumed by resentment and self-loathing, Eileen dreams of escaping to the big city. In the meantime, she fills her nights and weekends with shoplifting, stalking a buff prison guard named Brandy, and cleaning up her increasingly deranged father's messes. When the bright, beautiful, and cheery Rebecca St. John arrives on the scene as the prison's new counselor, Eileen is enchanted and proves unable to resist what appears at first to be a miraculously budding friendship. In a Hitchcockian twist, her affection for Rebecca ultimately pulls her into complicity in a crime that surpasses her wildest imaginings. And there's another paragraph after that, but I'm not going to read it. So Eileen... The Adaptation, directed by William Oldroyd, written... Oh, yeah, okay, so on IMDb, it says the writer is Luke Goebel, but then on Letterboxd, it says Aaron Cressida Wilson is the writer. And then Otessa Moshbeck is also credited, but I don't know if it's because she also worked on the screenplay or if it's just because she's the author of the source material. And it stars... Anne Hathaway, Thomasin McKenzie, Marin Ireland, Shea Wiggum, Owen Teague, Jefferson White, Siobhan Fallon Hogan, and Tony Patano, among others. <laughs> okay. And then, continuing with this sort of, like, deranged, unhinged woman, hot girl summer from, like, the past couple years. Like, these are, these are peak, peak books for the past few summers. Continuing with that realm of literature, The Idiot by Alif Bottomin, uh, Pulitzer Prize finalist. So another situation where I'm going to read the back, honestly. <laughs> the year is 1995 and email is new. Um, Selin? I actually don't know how to pronounce the main character's name. It's S-E-L-I-N. Selin? The daughter of Turkish immigrants arrives for her freshman year at Harvard, where she signs up for classes in subjects she has never heard of, befriends her charismatic Serbian classmate Svetlana, and almost by accident begins corresponding with Ivan, an older mathematics student. Selen may have barely spoken to Ivan, but with each email they exchange, the act of writing seems to take on new and increasingly mysterious meanings. When the school year ends, Ivan goes to Budapest and Selen heads to the Hungarian countryside. Her summer does not resonate with anything she has previously heard about the typical experiences of college students, but rather is the beginning of a journey further inside herself, a coming to grips with the ineffable and exhilarating confusion of first love and with the growing consciousness that she is doomed to become a writer. And I have heard kind of mixed things on this. I feel like, yeah, ooh, this is the first book that I'm mentioning that I... I feel like has been more divisive than all the others <laughs> and um, I have not read this one yet. I'm really looking forward to it though because like they go to Hungary and I'm mostly Hungarian and I've always wanted to like connect more to that part of me but like my dad is adopted <laughs> and so it's never been like a part of my life really. He knows like his parents are Hungarian so that's why I know that. Um, like his birth parents. So anyway, The Idiot um, is in production. <laughs> That's all I know in terms of the film adaptation. Currently, as director and writer, we have Sandy Tan listed as 
you know, helming the project, which I'm really excited about personally, because um, she, if you don't know, is like the main subject of, main person of uh, Shirkers, the documentary that is on Netflix about her and a group of friends trying to make a movie um, when they were like teenagers and there being this like honestly creepy guy who was like really involved and he stole their movie. And so Shirkers, the documentary, is full of like behind the scenes footage and the only things that they really have left of that movie that they were trying to make. And I love the aesthetic and like the coloring, just it looks so fun and beautiful and like girlish. I don't know, like almost akin to Sofia Coppola, but like less subtle and less depressing. <laughs> I don't know, I'm thinking of the Virgin Suicides. Yeah, ever since watching Shirkers, I've been really interested in seeing and just knowing what Sandy Tan will do and wanting to ultimately see it if she does decide to make films uh, because she hadn't made anything, you know, prior to Shirkers, basically, from that time of being a teenager wanting to make a movie and then the Shirkers documentary. Highly recommend watching Shirkers and hopefully she sticks, is, you know, is part of the project and is the director writer of The Idiot. Even though I haven't read it yet, I just, um, I feel like she's a good fit for what uh, I've heard about this book and from watching Shirkers. But also now that I mention it, like Sofia Coppola may also be a good choice for director if Sandy Tan does not work out or something like that. And again, continuing in this realm of literary fiction, Night Bitch by Rachel Yotter, which I read earlier this year and it was so good. I actually think I like this more than my year of rest and relaxation. Not to like compare it, but like these are a couple of the books that I have read from, <laughs> from this massive list so I can actually talk about like my thoughts and feelings a little bit more. This is about a mother who turns into a dog. Um, not like permanently. So there actually is this other movie called Bitch where the mother turns into a dog. I think it's from 2017. And this is just like a new release from like last year, I'm pretty sure. So that's interesting uh, that they have a very similar premise. But this is very much a like study and social commentary on motherhood in in the 21st century, basically. I really liked that part of it, which I felt, even though, which is strange that I'm comparing my reading experience of this to my year of rest and relaxation, because I can connect technically more with that one based on me being around the same age as the, me being the same age as the main character and not being a mother, <laughs> basically. But the main character, the mother is an artist and she gives up being an artist while she is pregnant and then has the baby and is taking care of the baby because her husband's job pays more than being an artist. So she stays at home while her husband works in the city and he's gone for like the weekdays and then comes home on the weekends and that's his time to take care of the kid and spend time with, with them as a family. And the mother starts noticing, like, her canine teeth are, like, protruding a little bit more. And she's finding, like, patches of hair that, like, weren't there before. And maybe she's turning into a dog. And then she does turn into a dog. <laughs> and it's not permanently, that's what I started to say. Um, because I've seen the trailer for that movie called Bitch, and it seems like the main character, like, isn't actually the main character. And she's a dog the whole time. Uh, whereas Night Bitch turns into a dog and then she's a human again later so and then she turns into a dog and then she's a human again later um she also becomes like obsessed with this book that i forget what it's called but it basically is about other women and communities of women who turn into different animals and um oh it's like a, gu a guide book a guide to something that's gonna bother me that i can't remember the title because it was like good um, and i liked that sort of like obsession and like peek into this sort of like mystical world it was kind of giving me like native vibes overall and i think that's just because of the way that it seemed like the women who were turning into animals were letting go of 
modern living and I don't know receiving back <laughs> does that make sense like tuning into their like primitive selves in a way is I don't mean for that to like sound stereotypical or like rude or like offensive in terms of like that native and primitive connection there by the way okay anyway um night bitch the film no release date as of yet but it is directed by Mar mariel heller um imdb also credits heller as writer but letterboxd only names rachel yotter who is the author and as forecast, we just have Amy Adams coming for her Oscar, ladies and gentlemen, as the mother in Night Bitch. I'm telling you. <laughs> I am so looking forward to the art performance scene at the very end of this because her turning into a dog and her reading this field guide book has been very inspiring for her as an artist. And she's a performance artist, so she creates this performance at the end and I'm ready Amy Adams <laughs> coming for her Oscar okay and then also Scoot McNary as um the the husband the father the husband the husband the father one of those I mean the same it, <laughs> they're the same character but like I don't know how he's referenced because it's just like the mother and she's like the main character probably the husband okay anyway um night bitch don't go in that house. Sacrifices have taken place there. She starts acting differently and mm, she may be possessed. It's giving me like Spiderwick Chronicles plus Fantastic Mr. Fox vibes. In the forest primeval, a school for good and evil, two towers like twin heads, one for the pure, one for the wicked. Try to escape, you'll always fail. The only way out is through a fairy tale. Oh my god, I'm intrigued. Stranger Things before Stranger Things. I found out about it through the trailer. Uglies, directed by McG. Like, who was talking about the Ugly series? 